Davis now is Alex Bond, who's a former FBI special agent. He's a former FBI interrogator now. Terrorism officials have any theory. Operating officer. Mustafi is a former FBI special agent. Who's now chief operating officer for the Sufran Group. Global security consulting firm. Ali Soufan is a former FBI supervisory special agent. He investigated many terrorism cases, including the East Africa embassy bombings, the attack on the USS Cole, and the events before and after 9-11. He is now CEO of the Soufan Group. Ali, good morning. Good morning, Ali. So let's talk about how this investigation is unfolding. Police say they don't have enough evidence to connect this back to ISIS, but the suspect was known. What do you make of that? Well, first of all, it's interesting that the suspect is a Tunisian. And as you know, Tunisians uh, represent the largest national contingency in ISIS from all the foreign fighters, 6,000 of them come from, uh, you know, Tunisian backgrounds. Uh, also, if you look into Europe, uh, there are hotbeds of uh, extremism, especially in Belgium and France mm -hmm. and other places around the count continent. And most of these people come from North Africa. Many of them come from Tunisia. Now, what we see with this attack is something a little bit different than what we saw, for example, with the Nice attack. It looks, it's a truck plow or, you know, and, and, and killed uh, uh, people. But also at the same time, this is way more complicated. So somebody actually hijacked a the truck. They killed the driver yeah. uh, first with a knife and then allegedly they shot him. They kept the body in the car and then uh, they used the truck as a weapon. Mm -hmm. That's a level of uh, complexity that we did not see before. Mm -hmm. in and you places. think that reflects greater planning? That reflects uh, that at least uh, the individual who did it, it has some sort of training mm -hmm. and maybe connected to a larger cell. So it's not what we've seen in San Bernardino. It's not what we've seen in Orlando. It's not even what we've seen in, 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 in Nice, where an individual self-radicalized mm -hmm. and overnight they, do, they go from the radicalization phase to the mobilization phase. Uh, that's a little bit different. Another thing that makes me, you know, wonder about this case, the fact that ISIS claimed responsibility before there is a dead body. Yeah. Mostly they only claim that these guys are soldiers of the caliphate after they are dead. Mm. We've seen that in San Bernardino, we've seen that in Orlando, we've seen that in Paris, we've seen that in Belgium. In this case, almost, you know, a few hours after the attack, they claim that he is a soldier of the caliphate. So, so what do you make of that, Alec? Well, I think maybe he is connected. To, uh, to, to, to ISIS. Maybe he is connected to Araqqa. Maybe he is connected to a cell that's doing external work and external operation, not the uh, typical terrorist attacks we've seen where they wait for a phone call or they wait f to see a post with uh, that person pledging Baya or allegiance to Baghdadi and to the Islamic State. Uh, the, 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 the law enforcement sources say they found the suspect's ID on the floor of this truck. Sure. Why would they wait two days to, to put this name out? Well, you don't know what's going on. Sometimes in law enforcement, you have evidence and then you try to follow leads. You try to, mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, catch the individual without giving them a heads up that you're looking for them. Um, so, you know, I think there's different probably investigative calculations that, that fed into this. But the moment they released uh, the Pakistani slash Afghani, as they called him, yes. uh, yeah, the suspect, earlier suspect, the earlier suspect, it was very obvious that the police in Germany have some stronger leads uh, that indicates uh, that individual was innocent. Using a truck as like a battle ram, essentially, mm -hmm. was something that was proposed in the ISIS literature. So it's been right. out there. So intelligence knows that this is, and as the NYPD's John Miller said here yesterday, here at home, they're talking to these truck companies to make sure that sure. there's a lot of cooperation going on. But in this case, it was a stolen sure. truck. What kind of questions does that raise for you about security here at home? Well, you know, I think we have to uh, realize that Europe is very different than the United yeah. States. I think after 9-11, we put a lot of uh, structures in place that created better cooperation between state and local and between uh, federal agencies, also between intelligence and law enforcement. So we have a lot of things here in place that uh, can prevent something like this. But as you know, unfortunately, you know, uh, we have to be successful 100% of the time. They have to be successful only, only once. Mm -hmm. 
but so far, I think I trust uh, the good work that the Joint Terrorism Task Forces around the nations are doing. Mm -hmm. Here, as you see in New York City, NYPD has been doing phenomenal work. And I think we have a lot of uh, uh, things in place to prevent something like this. Uh, but the, also, the, the, the thing with, as you mentioned, with, uh, with the trucks, this is not uh, proposed by ISIS. Before, it actually was proposed by Al-Qaeda. Mm -hmm. uh, the first entity to uh, ask their followers yeah. around the world to use trucks to kill innocent people were Al-Qaeda and Inspired Magazine in 2010. Right. Ali Sufan, always good to have you here. Thank you so much. Great pleasure. Thank you.